The Lord's changed our message this morning. How ironic, right? John chapter 8. I really was going to preach a message on how to move God, uh, but God moved me this morning. Uh, and, and Lord willing, we'll get to preach that message uh, in the future, in the near future. Uh, you know we can move God. I, I didn't say change God, but we can move God. The Bible teaches us that in the beginning of time, that the Lord Jesus Christ, or God Himself, when He was creating everything that we see, He made this statement. He said, let us make man in our own image. Yeah. And if we are made in the image of God, then God responds and reacts the same way we do. Yeah. You all ever get angry with your children? Sure. I think sometimes God gets angry with us. Do you think that God, uh, or you ever get jealous over certain things? I believe that God is jealous of us sometimes. But as I was sitting there, I thought of, of something as she was singing that last song. And she, it kept going over and over in my mind, this is my story. Can I ask you something this morning? What is your story? What is your story? What are you dealing with in life? What are you faced with in life? What moves you? What are you going through? What has your life trapped? Is it sin? Is it, is it the love of God? It could be many different things, but what is your story? Why are you here today? In John chapter 8, there was a story, and for the life of me, I have no idea why this story come to my mind, but there was a woman that had been caught in the very act of adultery. Now, when one is caught in the very act of adultery, under the biblical terms and under the law, that they would immediately be stoned and they would be killed for the adultery that they had committed. But as I read this story, I noticed that there was only one present before Jesus Christ. They had caught this very woman in that very act of adultery and they brought her to Jesus. But I began to think, why was it just the woman? Where was the man? I believe it takes more than one person to commit adultery. And if they were caught in the very act of adultery, should not have both of them been brought to Jesus? But they did it for a reason. Maybe for the fact that this woman had done it multiple times. Maybe that she gave them a hard time when they caught her in the very act of adultery. I have no idea. But regardless of what the issue was, she was brought to Jesus. And in verse 8, let us read real quickly. Jesus went into the Mount of Olives. And early in the morning, verse 1, verse 2 now, he came again into the temple. And all the people came unto him, and he sat down and taught them. And the scribes and the Pharisees brought unto him a woman taken in adultery. And when they had settled, or when they had set her in the midst, I want you to think about that. They brought her and set her in the midst of everybody. Verse 4, they said to him, Master, this, this woman was taken in adultery in the very act. Now Moses in the law commanded us that such should be stoned. But what sayest thou? This they said tempted him that they might have to accuse him. But Jesus stooped down with his finger, wrote on the ground as though he heard them not. So when they continued asking him, he lifted him up himself and said unto them, He that is without sin among you, let him first cast a stone at her. Father, we thank you for this day. Lord, would you give us a few moments of time? Would you speak through us your word tonight, this morning? God, we ask that if there are some here that may not know you for the pardon and remission of sin, God, may they get up out of their seat. Lord, may they come to the altar. May they confess their sins before you. And God, may they be gloriously saved. 
And for that, God will give you honor, will give you glory, will thank you for all that you do, what you have done, and what you're going to do. Because, Lord, we, you are the great I am. We thank you for that. We ask God that you would just help us here this morning for a short period of time. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated just for a moment. When I read this passage of Scripture and when I thought about it, 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 it amazes me how that sometimes in life we can get so off course and, and we can look at things differently. But do you realize something that God, when God sees us, if we're not right with God, and in all of our righteousness, in the best that we can ever be in this life, the God of this universe, the Savior of the world, the Alpha and the Omega, the God of who created everything, looks down upon us, and what He sees is this. Filthy rags. Under the law, in order for someone to have their sins covered, now notice I said sins covered. Under the law, in order for someone to have their sins covered, they must bring a sacrifice. And that sacrifice must be uh, a yearly, uh, an animal under the age of one. And it had to be pure. It should not and could not have any blemishes. It would be given to the high priest. The high priest then would slaughter it. He would take the blood and he would apply the blood. And that blood that was applied would be a covering for the sin for one year. It covered all of their sin. And they did that year after year after year. But I want you to notice something, church. The blood that was applied under the law could never, ever, ever do away with the sin. It was always there. Amen. And God saw that you and I could not live under the law of God. Yeah. <laughs> Let's look at them. Thou shalt not have no other gods before me. How many of you have ever put something before God? Go ahead and raise your hands. I'm not going to look because we all have. Thou shalt make not other uh, a graven image. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord in vain. I'm, I'm sure that none of us have cursed. Remember the Sabbath. Yeah. What are most people's at today? Uh -huh. Honor thy father and thy mother. I'm sure that you never had a disagreement with your mother and father. I'm sure that your children, parents, have never had a disagreement with you and you felt dishonored. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. I'm sure as a little child going through the, the stores back when you was a little kid that you never reached out your little hand while in the buggy and grabbed a piece of bubble gum and put it in your mouth. I only say that because I did it. <laughs> hey, I used to go with mom to the store and she hated for me to go to the store with her. Because my little hand was always grabbing at something. I, I remember, and in fact, I, I remember getting, and usually you go to the fruits and vegetables, that's the first, I remember just grabbing a banana, peeling it back and eating it. Back then they didn't have whales, they had cheeses. I remember getting a box of cheeses and, and opening them up and having them empty by the time we got into the checkout line. But I'm sure that none of us have ever stolen. I'm sure that we've never bared false witness. And I'm sure that we've never coveted. I can assure you that one of these ten commandments that every one of us has broke. Amen. And when we broke them, sin came a part of our life. And listen, David said, I was conceived in sin. So when we're born into this life, we are born into a world of iniquity, a world of sin. And when we die, my friend, you may not have a choice to have come into this world, but you do have a choice on the direction you'll leave it. Amen. Amen. Joshua said, choose ye this day whom you'll serve. That's for me in my house. We will serve the Lord. Amen. This woman was caught in the very act of adultery. She was brought before Jesus Christ. Pastor, why are you saying this? I want to share with you the love of God and how much He loves you this morning. 
Now, for someone to commit adultery, I don't know about you, but that's horrific. That's terrible. It not only affects the people, it affects the children, it affects the community, it affects the church, it affects everybody. Amen. But I like the response of Christ. They brought her to him. And they asked him this question, tempting him. What are you going to do about it? And Jesus being who he is, the love that he showed for her, the love that he shows to every one of us. Yeah. Amen. He made this statement. He that is without sin, let him first cast a stone at her. But before he answered that question, when they brought her to him, he simply stooped down and just with his finger was writing something in the dirt. I began to think about what possibly Jesus could have been writing in the dirt. Well, maybe, well, just maybe it was all of her sin that she had committed because she was the one brought to him. Or, it could have been the sin of every one of them that brought her to him. And that's why he asked the question, let him that is without sin first cast the stone. You see, what I, I said all that because of the fact of the matter is this. Every one of us, every one of you, whole world that we see in which we live in has sin in their lives. Amen. I've never met a perfect man. I've read about one. His name was Jesus. And the same one that I've read about is the same one that forgave me. The same one that saved Jeff 13 years ago. But not only did he save him, he has kept him. I'd say that's a pretty good God. That's right. He brought Jeff, Jeff to the cross of Calvary. Jeff was saved and gloriously saved. That doesn't mean that he's not going to sin anymore. But the Bible says if we sin, we have an advocate. Amen. God, the righteous judge, amen, will forgive us of our sins. This woman was brought in the very act, but I like what Jesus said. Again, he stooped down in verse 8 and he wrote on the ground. And they which heard it being convicted. And they which heard it being convicted. What is your story? Why are you here today? You see, I understand that Christians come. The week we consider this the hospital. This is the place where you come and you find rest. You find restitution. You find forgiveness. Amen. But some of you may be here today in search of something. You may, you may be in search of peace. You may be in search of hope. You may be in search of answers. You may be. Listen, it does not matter why you're here. I can tell you this by the authority of God's word. I've got the answer. His name is Jesus. Yeah. Can you imagine how she must have thought and felt when she was humiliated between, before all of those people? <coughs> she knew she was guilty. She had been caught in the very act of adultery. Now, I'm not saying that some of you have been caught in the very act of adultery. You may have, you may not have, but it doesn't regard, it does not matter. It could be adultery. It could be as little as not being saved. Because see, sin is sin. If the blood of Jesus Christ that covers all of our sins has not been applied to your life, you are convicted. Amen. You see, these men thought they had her dead to right. Because they had caught her in the very act of adultery. May I say this? I have no idea what you're faced with. I have no idea what you're going through. I have no idea what you're guilty of. 
But I do know this. You've already been caught. Yeah. And it's not by me. No. Mm -hmm. You see, you've been convicted already because sin will convict you when the gospel of Christ is preached. You see, today, if you have hope, and the hope that you have is in this life, you're miserable today. But I've got assurance. I can tell you by the authority of God's word. If you confess the Lord Jesus Christ and surrender your heart, you can have peace that passes all understanding. Amen. Amen. So what is your story? What is your song? My story used to be I'm guilty. My song used to be belly up to the bottom of the bottle. But my story's changed. And my story was not changed because of what I did. My story was changed because of what he did. You see, this, this woman's story, she came to him guilty. Convicted she had been caught in the very act. But Jesus looked at her and said, let him without sin cast the first stone. And then she looked, he looked at her and he says, now tell me, where are your accusers? You realize something where the blood of Christ is applied to your life. All of your sins can be forgiven. Amen. As far as the east is from the west, so far hath he removed my transgressions. He has cast them into the sea of forgetfulness, never to be remembered again. Now let me just help you with something. Though he forgives, though he forgets, you have an adversary. The devil. That will not forget. The Bible in the book of Revelation says that he is the accuser of the brethren. He will falsify stuff before God. Yes, he, will. he will go to God and say, listen, he or she did this. They're not repentant. They're not convicted of their heart. And they're not living for you. But God will open up the holy word of God. He'll look at that book of life. And he'll see your name written there. Amen. Amen. And you know what Jesus will say? I find no fault. Because he has been covered. She has been covered. By the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. Again, what is your story? I'm going to ask Kennedy to come. I want her to sing that song again. I want you to ask yourself this question. What is your story? What is your story? What are you dealing with? What are you hiding from? What are you trying to hide from people? Listen, it does not matter if you hide it from me. My friend, the all-seeing eye of God has already seen it. And right now, God's speaking to hearts and he's revealing to you where you have fallen short. Yeah. Where you have sinned. And you know what he's doing? He's not condemning you to hell. Because see, judgment has not yet come. But judgment will come one day. Yeah. And as it is appointed unto man once to die. And this, the judgment. Amen. You see, you still have opportunity today. Pastor Mark, what are you talking about? You still have an opportunity to get things settled with God. What is your story? What are you faced with? What are you dealing with? What are you trying to get rid of? The problem is you're convicted by it right now. Amen. But you have a choice. Would you come to Jesus? See, Jesus said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. And if any man will hear my voice and open the door, he said, I'd come in and sup with him and him with me. He said, Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden. He said, I will give you rest. Yeah. Are you looking for rest? As she sings and as we stand this morning. I told you I wouldn't be long.